It's one of the most famous automotive nameplates in the world, and it's back in Australia. Yep, the most popular Yank Tank truck of them all, the Ford F-150, will be rolling into Aussie dealerships in November. But you don't have to wait till then to find out what it's all about. Come with me as we check out the detail and then take it for a drive. This is the 14th generation F series and we're driving the chrome laden upper spec F150 Lariat in short wheelbase form. Mind you, short wheelbase is relative. This thing is still nearly six meters long overall. The F150 is being converted locally to right hand drive for Ford and that helps explain the high pricing. Mind you, the F-150's two key competitors, the Ram 1500 and Chevy Silverado, are also converted locally and cost plenty as well. While its rivals have V8 engines, the F-150 opts for a 3.5-litre twin-turbo petrol V6 with category-topping pulling power. Considering this thing weighs in at more than 2,500 kilos, the claimed 12.5 litres per 100 kilometres fuel consumption rate is almost acceptable it will run on the cheapest 91 RON as well. The engine drives all four wheels via a 10-speed auto and a 4x4 system with high and low range and the ability to run in auto four-wheel drive on the bitumen. Sitting in the driver's seat, you wouldn't know this is a local conversion job. It really is high quality and well stitched together. Unlike some other locally remanufactured utes, there's nothing missing from the equipment list. In fact, some features that are optional in America, like the B&O 18-speaker sound system, are standard here. It's in the rear seat where these full-size utes really have an advantage over mid-size staples like the Toyota Hilux and Ford's own Ranger. There's sprawling space for adults, and check out this handy storage fence you can set up when the seat is folded out of the way. It's in the tray where things get a bit weird with these full-size Yankee utes. They just don't have the same payload as the best of the popular mid-sizes. This one only carries 685 kilos and that really impacts its ability to haul much payload when towing at the huge 4,500 kilogram claimed maximum. While there's been millions and millions of dollars spent on the process of turning the F-150 into a right hooker, the actual mechanical package remains fundamentally unchanged. That's really good news when it comes to the engine because this is a strong and smooth unit that really grapples mightily and impressively with all this weight. It makes a really appealing artificial growl when accelerating, but if you're cruising, the cabin is a very quiet place to be. The fuel consumption figure, according to the trip computer in the car, also came in under the official claim, but we weren't stressing the drivetrain too much. The F-150 is not only a quiet place to be, it's comfortable as well. It's surprisingly cushioned in its ride, even without a load on board. The long wheelbase helps settle things down as well. One thing that does change for Australia is the steering, which borrows the rack from the Ranger Raptor. Ford engineers reckon it's a better solution than the original left-hand drive F-150. We'll just say for a truck of this size, it's pretty manoeuvrable. So, first taste. Gotta say, this is an impressive conversion of an impressive vehicle. Look, we didn't tow, we didn't drive laden, and we didn't have much of a go on gravel but at first taste, this is a decent vehicle to drive and certainly to travel in. But just driving around in the F-150 is to be reminded it is at the very limit of acceptable size for a passenger vehicle. In fact, for some people now, it's over that size. The F-150 is at its best in the wide open spaces rather than urban centers and car parks. So if you've got some exploring to do and you can afford the fuel bill, then the F-150 might be for you. But if you're looking for an urban rig for everyday life, look elsewhere. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe for more videos and let us know what you think in the comments below.